virtual element method for solid and structural mechanics by Eduardo Artioli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to thank uh, my colleague Andrea Micheletti for the nice uh, invitation together with uh, the whole organizing committee. Um, I would like also to acknowledge my co-workers that are listed here and uh, to whom many of the following results and developments uh, um, owe. Um, uh, my presentation is um, uh, starts with uh, giving some brief details on the virtual element methods and uh, to make uh, things simple, I will just stick with um, equilibrium of uh, 2D continuum bodies, uh, uh, possibly exhibiting uh, nonlinear and elastic material behavior. I will just try to keep the uh, discussion uh, the least possible technical uh, for the presentation not to be too boring to, any, to anybody. And, uh, and subsequently, I will just uh, present some applications that we have been working on in the recent years. Uh, trying to show the main features of this uh, relatively uh, new method. And finally, we'll draw some uh, conclusion. Um, so just to give an idea, uh, here are the uh, first papers on the method, the seminal papers by the group uh, of numerical analysis led by Professor Brezzi and Professor Beirao in uh, Pavia. They are basically the inventors of the method which is, uh, as the uh, name itself uh, reminds, a numerical tool for uh, the numerical approximation of PDEs. Uh, so sticking with um, uh, equilibrium problem for two-dimensional uh, material bodies, um, uh, we have um, a variational formulation for this uh, problem which is provided by the principle of uh, virtual work. And if we work in a primal setting, um, we end up with uh, a variational formulation for the displacement. And uh, very much in a similar fashion to standard finite element analysis, we build a discrete form for this uh, uh, statement by constructing um, discrete approximation spaces for the unknown for the displacement field, and we restrict the variational formulation to this discrete setting. So when we go to virtual elements and we do so, we first uh, start from considering a simple polygonal mesh of our uh, reference domain, which is any sort of a subdivision of the um, body domain to non overlapping polygons with either straight or curved edges, as we have uh, here in the sketch on the upper right part of the slide, where we have uh, a unit square, which is uh, discretized by a Voronoi uh, castellation. So um, that's the kind of mesh we're looking into uh, when we deal with uh, virtual elements. And um, as I said, very much in, in the classical uh, FE uh, fashion, we build um, local approximation for our the displacement field. Um, starting from um, from the element level, from, from the polygon level. We call it the virtual uh, admissible displacement field, uh, VH. And uh, this is built up uh, choosing for a, a positive integer K representing the order of accuracy of the method. And um, uh, this is the collection of uh, vector valid functions that have uh, um, sufficient regularity over uh, the uh, polygon domain and are defined as follows. Uh, they have um, a Laplacian, which is uh, a uh, polynomial of degree up to k minus two and uh, uh, over the element and um, are um, a polynomial of degree k over the element boundary. That is all we know about our, our um, virtual element uh, functions. So um, the idea is that for functions dh, we have that they are um, totally known explicitly on the element boundary, they're fully implicit, meaning not known inside the element, and they are globally continuous over the element uh, boundary. Um, a picture that I like to show at this point is the following, uh, which basically emphasizes that with this kind of, uh, of uh, method, uh, we have a relaxed com a mesh conformity uh, concept, uh, allowing for, uh, as you can see here, um, hanging nodes just to mention one uh, key feature uh, of the method, which is rather different from standard uh, finite elements. Um, 
again, uh, very much in, in FEM fashion, we have um, a FEM-like representation of the unknown field, namely the discrete approximated displacement will be a linear combination of uh, uh, some virtual shape functions through local degrees of freedom, which are defined uh, um, with respect to the order of the method. So for instance, looking at the pentagon on the right column, if we do linear virtual elements, we have that our degrees of freedom will be the uh, local values at the vertices of the displacement. If we go to quadratic, we have also uh, local values at the edges midpoints plus the uh, average over the element. If we go higher, we have more um, degrees uh, over, the, uh, over the edges of the element and higher um, moment over the uh, polygons. So um, everything, if you can see, is pretty much in, in, in the fashion of standard finite elements. And uh, the, the uh, construction of the global space of approximation is done in the classical fashion, namely by, by gluing with the C0 regularity at the um, inter-element boundaries. Um, we have tested this method uh, uh, um, in, in conjunction with material nonlinearity, and we have uh, basically uh, made a numerical campaign over classical benchmarks. Here, I'm going to show you just a couple. This is uh, own. Um, this is a uh, classical benchmark from uh, plasticity. It's the perforated plastic strain under the plane strain solution uh, assumption. We tested here um, different meshes, different uh, um, loading conditions, and uh, we compared with um, reference solution obtained with uh, mixed enhanced uh, finite elements. Um, another illustrative example is uh, taken from uh, um, shape memory uh, alloy materials. It's uh, a simple uh, thermomechanical actuator which uh, exploits both shape memory effect and uh, super elasticity undergoing a thermomechanical loading cycle. And um, as we can see here, we have um, a positive comparison with, uh, with reference solutions as well. So the main message from this uh, uh, quite large uh, gallery of, of uh, numerical experiment is that uh, we have uh, somehow assessed uh, the method, uh, uh, accuracy, precision, and robustness, its versatility with respect to the uh, chosen constitutive model, and uh, we have uh, um, uh, basically found that method uh, shows low to no uh, sensitivity with respect to mesh distortion. And more importantly, anything connected to a standard nonlinear FAM implementation can still be retained. Um, so uh, another interesting application that we have been recently working on with the group by Professor Riggers in, uh, in Hanover is the development of virtual elements for comp uh, computational contact mechanics problem. Here we see a couple of uh, standard benchmarks, the classical Hersian, co Hersian contact problem and a more sophisticated uh, problem related to a elastical indenter which penetrates uh, a spherical substrate. We have developed um, uh, curved uh, curvilinear virtual elements, and we have exploited uh, in this in this uh, framework uh, uh, some of the key features uh, granted by the method, which are local mesh refinement and the possibility of inserting knots at the curved interface um, of the contact between uh, the two uh, bodies, uh, which proved quite uh, efficient in in uh, regard to uh, available contact uh, uh, algorithms. Um, Moving on, uh, the, another um, interesting uh, area that we have been recently working on with uh, Professor Sacco from the University of uh, um, Naples, Federico II, and Professor Mafia from the University of Roma Tre is uh, uh, the development of a, a BAM-based uh, fracture path fracking algorithm for 2D cohesive fracture. Here again, you can see that we have exploited some of the uh, key features granted by the method basically the possibility of dealing with uh, uh, evolving interfaces within the um, domain of interesting um, and also the possibility of having refined forward and backward the mesh refinement uh, strategies for a, a, I would say, efficient uh, uh, factor path tracking uh, algorithm. Um, another interesting uh, field that we have been involved recently uh, is related to the computational homogenization of fiber-reinforced composite materials, either 
uh, with a double periodic arrangement or in, uh, in a random arrangement without giving too much details, uh, this problem, again, uh, leads to uh, solving um, a um, standard elliptic problem over a complex 2D domain, which is represented here, which is the unit cell domain for the composite material. And uh, we proved uh, that uh, using virtual elements is quite uh, an efficient strategy to, to derive uh, uh, the solution to such a problem for many for many reasons. Uh, as you can see here, we have basically a very similar construction of the method with respect to the initial case. Um, in this case, we have the capability of exactly reproducing the uh, curvilinear geometry of the interface between the fibers and the matrix. And pretty much everything is very close, very similar to the uh, initially presented construction. We have tested the method for different types of uh, meshes uh, for different uh, orders, higher orders, confirming accuracy and uh, convergence. Um, and lately, uh, with uh, Lorenzo Beirao and Marco Verani from uh, the Politecnico uh, you are, in Milano. You are, you, are, you are over 10 minutes. Okay, just uh, one more slide, and I'm done. Yes. Uh, we have extended the analysis to random composite materials and uh, to more involved uh, uh, complex fiber cross sections. Um, getting quite uh, good results as well. Uh, the last application, which is related to um, uh, late uh, problems, uh, is uh, uh, in, done in collaboration with Professor Taylor and uh, Lorenzo Beirao, and is basically um, a technique that we have devised uh, borrowing uh, the so-called linking uh, approximation from finite element uh, analysis, which in this case proved uh, quite efficient in deriving uh, shear locking free uh, plate uh, virtual elements. Um, just uh, a, a very quick conclusion. We have that uh, we think about, uh, we think that uh, the VAM uh, is, uh, is a numerical tool with the potential in solving applied mechanics problem. And uh, that uh, there are many features that make it uh, quite interesting as a potential alternative to standard finite element method. And that uh, there's a lot more to be explored in this uh, uh, in this field. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Eduardo. Uh, I think you have really an encyclopedic knowledge about the virtual element method. <laughs>